Welcome to Good News Week and the big news, beast. A beast! That's right, a beast, a monster, a beast! <laughs> the Hawkesbury River in Sydney is home to an aquatic beast related to Scotland's legendary Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> yeah. In fact, it sometimes teams up with the Blue Mountains Panther <laughs> to protect the Shire from aliens. <laughs> Don't believe me? Have a look at this. A giant, endangered, aquatic beast living peacefully in Australian waters. Don't tell Japan. <laughs> uh, a man by the name of Rex Gilroy has compiled hundreds of sighting reports. Some of them from other people. <laughs> Most of them. <laughs> Most of the sightings tend to occur around the Mooney Mooney area. Just outside the Mooney Mooney pub. And always, uh, just a little after closing time. <laughs> He's taken his wife out on hundreds of trips to try and catch the monster, but it refuses to take the bait. <laughs> yeah. So now he's thinking of taking someone else's wife. <laughs> the creature may be the moiliwonk, mentioned in Aboriginal folklore. Moiliwonk is a traditional word meaning gullible white bloke. <laughs> The Mooley Wonk loves dancing, and sometimes, if you listen carefully, you can hear it doing the truly ruly, hooly dooly, Mooley Wonk, honky tonk, hanky panky, mooney mooney stomp. Yeah. Feel the love. Yeah. Ah, anyone remember the Iraq War? <laughs> no? Yes? We won, right? Pulled out in glorious victory? Yes? No? Baghdad still has a little suicide bomber problem, so they're going to build a massive wall around the entire city. Yeah. Well, it works so well in Israel. <laughs> and if there's one thing a suicide bomber can never destroy, it's a wall. <laughs> After a series of attacks, Baghdad's governor has proposed a barrier that's uh, 4.5 metres high, 112 kilometres long, and impossible to breach unless you're some kind of rocket. <laughs> Construction will take about a year, and to prevent attacks while it's being built, another wall will be built slightly further out. <laughs> but don't worry, the construction of that wall will be protected by yet another wall, <laughs> uh, which will in turn be protected by a series of three more walls, with Baghdad at the centre, like a nice big target. <laughs> In retaliation, hardcore extremists are working on a mysterious and devastating terrorist device known as a ladder. <laughs> Julia Gillard has done it. She's pulled a rabbit out of a hole in the ground. <laughs> the new Prime Minister took just over a week to resolve a bitter two-month fight with the mining industry. At this rate, she'll stop the boats, revive the ETS and personally check the insulation in every roof <laughs> by the end of the month. Uh, Gillard brokered a deal, and all it cost was $1.5 billion. $1.5 billion. This means we'll get more superannuation when we retire, but we will have to work a couple of days a week down the mines. <laughs> Some critics say Gillard allowed the miners to take advantage of her, but really, during a honeymoon period, you expect to be screwed one way or another. <laughs> One thing's for sure, it's election time, Australia, when voters can decide which one of Gillard or Abbott they want to run the country until their party gets sick of them. <laughs> it's Julia versus Tony, the woman who smashed the glass ceiling versus the man who's praying to God to miraculously tape it back together again. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Although, you know, there's no, there's no real need for an election. I think we all know who's running the country. Yeah? Yeah? The guys in the hard hats with the little lamps on them. <laughs> and that's the good news. It's good news, Lee.
Thank you. Good evening. Tonight, with Noddy gone and Big Ears worried, the suave sophistication of Mikey Robbins. The gentle goodness of Kitty Flanagan. And the quiet beauty of Tim Ferguson. Oh, lean on it. And they're pledging their full support to the dear leader, Claire Hooper. Headlining the Sunshine Coast Comedy Festival this weekend, the finest Englishman on that team, Jeff Green. <laughs> and the myth, the legend, the icon, Arj Barker. Yeah. Oh. Sunshine Coast Comedy Festival. Sunshine Coast, yes. Mm. I've been trapped because I've been doing loads of touring dates. I did a gig with you, didn't I, Mikey? And I never get a chance to plug a gig because everyone else does, but I'm actually doing the Sunshine Coast with you. We're doing it together. I'm your yeah. driver. <laughs> yes, thanks. <exactly. laughs> because that's one of the great things about, you know, when you come to Australia, you get to tour and see loads of the beautiful parts of Australia. I was in Broken Hill, which is... <laughs> it's not that bad. Honestly, <laughs> it is the middle of nowhere. You put a dollar in a parking meter, you get two days. <laughs> Two days. There's 4,000 people and two surnames in the Broken Hill area. <laughs> yes. People going around going, give me six in Broken Hill. <laughs> <laughs> they would probably write in if they understood that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, have you actually been? It's like, um, you know, you walk, there's Cobalt Lane and Arsenic Boulevard. And <laughs> you need the periodic table to find your way around. It's, <laughs> it's incredible. Um, but, yeah, so, that's, so I'm doing that with, uh, with Mikey uh, next week. Oh, good. Hmm. You're looking forward to it? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm Mikey, just... you were brilliant. Oh, and, and you were good on stage as well. <laughs> <laughs> and look, we've got something here from Arj. You have a, a DVD out, I believe. Yeah, I have a brand new uh, DVD coming out, I think in August. <laughs> but the thing about this is it's called Forever. Why is it called well, Forever? There's a few reasons why. Number one, entirely non-biodegradable. So, <laughs> you know when you buy, you buy a DVD and like, three or four hundred years later it starts to wear out? <laughs> <laughs> Not with this. It's gonna last forever. But also, it's a nice name because it's my third DVD in the trilogy, and the other ones are called Balls and Live. So then when you put them together, you have Balls Live Forever. <laughs> and it's just kind of long. <laughs> kind of drags a bit. So. Hey, Paul, I've got a message as well. This is not from me. My uncle texted me from Iceland. Just says, hi, Claire. Could you let Julia know that I would still do her a favour even though she will now have to be bossy? Love, Cam. <laughs> so I just, just wanted to get that message out to Ms Gillard, courtesy of my uncle. I've got his number, if you're interested. <laughs> Actually, I must admit, like, the, 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 past, the past, you know, uh, week or so, with, with, with uh, Julia Gillard taking over, I've been wondering what other hot redhead she reminds me of. I clicked the other night while I was watching telly. Lois from Family Guy. <gasps> she looks like the wife from Family Guy, and I find that hot. Wilma from the Flintstones? Well, yeah, Wilma from the... Oh, oh wow. <laughs> I'm getting a whole sort of giggity, giggity, giggity going on here. I, lo I love the fact that the Queen sent uh, Julia a telegram, and uh, uh, Obama sent uh, phoned her, and then Shane, uh, Shane Warne sent her a text. <laughs> So uh, while well, we are doing the big sell, uh, uh, Mr. Ferguson has a book as well. The Cheeky Monkey. The yes. Cheeky Monkey. Oh. Mine, mine's signed by the author. Signed by, signed by the author with a sticker. Yup. <laughs> no, inside with his name. Oh, gorgeous. But I didn't even have to meet him to do it. I just went into the bookstore <laughs> and I asked someone with a signature <laughs> on it and they had one. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, that one is actually signed with my DNA. If you <laughs> find a page where it's hard to... <laughs> Pull oh. apart. <laughs> Hold on to that, because in a hundred years you could turn that into an army of me. But, <laughs> but it's, it's a comedy book, it's the cheeky monkey, it's got everything that Paul taught me about comedy, which is why it's a thin book. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to write comedy, write to Paul or buy the book. Either way, you get the same deal. What's that what's chapter one called? Don't tell Richard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're mining our past now. And, and Kitty, lovely to have you on board. Yes. Yeah. You up to anything? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm touring at the moment. You're as well. touring? Yeah, it's been uh, really good. People have been coming. <laughs> so I've really been enjoying that. Um, worked with someone the other day who 
came backstage and they went, oh, you want to look out out there. They're, uh, the audience is uh, pretty white, middle class, middle aged. And I went, yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's going to be any problems here. I'm not sure the show's called Flandu from the Ghetto last time. <laughs> what was your opening game? Have you checked out the new Prius, homies? <laughs> and uh, with a week of her and Powell, what's your, what's your thoughts about Julia? Baron Spencer's. Rock on! <laughs> The Were you shocked by the news that uh, Kevin had been deposed? I'm happy for the, new, for the new change, but the whole thing is the miners' tax. It's all here, but taxing the miners and the miners and this and that. And I'll see what the big deal is. You know, as adults, we pay taxes, and I think it would, it would be, like, educational for them to, to, like, you know, to experience that and learn a little bit about it so that someday... Like, I, I think it's, like, a good learning experience for the miners if they, you know, like... Maybe don't tax them as much, but... I definitely think, you know, I don't read the news that much, but I think, uh, you know, that's what I think. <laughs> Did you want to say something, Jeff? Oh, no, it was one of my ventriloquists. <laughs> <laughs> Our first battleground is seven days and seven seconds. Team versus team over a quick montage of stories from the week. Five points for each correct answer. Opposing teams may challenge if you take too long. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right? Yeah. Let's roll it. Let's roll it. Oh, seven days and seven seconds. It's so sexy. It's the news. Boom, 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 boom. Seven days, seven seconds. Seven seconds. <laughs> Crazy sexy. <laughs> okay, Robin Steen, first story. What was that about? Sexy. <laughs> <laughs> It was about uh, Tiger Airways. Yes, indeed. And the idea that you now they want you to basically check yourself in, uh, make your own lunch and try and fly the plane if you can, just to save money. Oh, I thought they were doing... Aren't they doing stand-up seating? Yes. <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're right. No, 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 you're right. Ryan Air, Ryan and Air in investigating you. it and Tiger have said that they'll, in, mm. they'll implement stand-up seating as well if yeah. it works out for Ryan and Air. It's where they strap you onto, like, a board. <laughs> <laughs> they strap you onto a board. It looks like you're going to get the lethal injection, which is probably <laughs> that's probably what you would want if you're flying Tiger Airways. But, um... and, and, and 20 years from now, it's going to be like those trains in India where you're just on top. <laughs> Seagull! Whoa! <laughs> second story, Rocky. Second story from you. It's a bejeweled glove. Yeah. It was a Michael love. Jackson, um, yeah, record for Michael Jackson's they white found, glove. Uh, they found Michael Jackson's hand. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't tell us where. <laughs> and it was holding King Tut's penis. <laughs> that's missing too. I won't sleep tonight. <laughs> I'm going to give you uh, that and move away from you for a little while. Uh, next story, third story. Was the third story? Was that the ones where um, some like old, some older people were walking into like a? Um, it was a forum, a, you, a sports centre. Do well, I think it was some older people walking into a sports <laughs> centre. <laughs> Thank you, Kitty. Five points. points. <laughs> Do we have an answer? Yes, I believe the lady just said older people walking into a sports <laughs> centre. Oh, was it all the old people going into the jacuzzi to dissolve like desperately? <laughs> Kevin Rudd's number crunches, running around going, where are the numbers? They've all been crunched. <laughs> I can't believe no-one's got that. I'm shocked and what surprised. What is it? What is it? it? Well, I'll tell you when it's time to tell you. Oh. <laughs> uh, it wasn't even your question, Jeff. That's the beautiful thing with their question. But now this is your question. Oh. The fourth story, do we have? Was that, um, was that Tiger Woods? Yes. Tiger Woods and... And his wife, Eamon. And, and so it's, it's, there's a divorce happening and she's getting 750 million and the wow. house and he gets the car. <laughs> and uh, he's already smashed it. He has, yeah. <laughs> That's well, it. Thank you very much. The, the, the thing is, too, that uh, there were reports she was she was claiming seven hundred and fifty million, but his people have said he's not even worth. Not even worth. He's that. only worth six hundred million, isn't yeah. he? Six hundred million is still a lot. I mean, that's more than I make in a year. <laughs> Next story. Another flying car. Yeah, this is the car that's just been reclassified because it uh, didn't satisfy a weight limit to make it into a light aircraft. So it's a small car and uh, the, the Fed have just changed all the rules and so you can buy it. Yeah, thank you. That is the next story. But we've got a bit confused. <laughs> <laughs> can I just... Probably my fault. Third, third, third. 
that close crap. My, my pencil broke. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need some points for this round. So, uh, what was that story? Your hair looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> the fifth story. But the previous ah. story to the plane. No, the Russian spy story. Oh, Thank you very much. Yes. Can you explain some of that story? Yeah, but basically it's a whole bunch of Russians, one of whom, it has to be said, is really hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've basically been working underground in America for years. Designing planes. Shut up. <laughs> underground. Well, not only that, but they've been checking the neighbourhood. So they've been checking, uh, so now the Russians know when 7-Eleven opens, it is always open. I mean, these are the kind of informations that have been going to them. <laughs> Actually, Tim, Tim's right. They reckon that in all these years, these people have not gathered one bit of information no. that the average 12-year-old could get off the internet in an <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> but it's sleepers. They call them sleepers, so now we know what they've been doing. <laughs> uh, can we just uh, reiterate the flying car story? There's a plane uh, that's also a car, and it's going to be available. People can buy it. That's now it, 100% right. <laughs> and I'm going to throw the last story open. Does anyone remember? Oh, the G20! Wayne Swan went to the G20! G20. 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 God. Wayne, oh, Swan went, Wayne Swan went to the G20 and he forgot that uh, Julia Gillard was uh, Prime Minister. He called her Deputy Prime Minister. That's oh. it. So there was a little bit of confusion there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the stories were Tiger Airways, the airline that makes Qantas look reliable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear God. I remember something in, in the past with um, Ralph Fiennes. Rafe. Didn't Rafe. Rafe Fiennes. Yeah. And Qantas stood for quickies available now in the toilets. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me if I'm way off. He had to do it before the plane landed. I mean, he just wanted to get it all out of the way and have sex on the plane. He was the English impatient. <laughs> <laughs> Settle down, Ralph. Yes. Diger Airways, Ralph. the airline that makes Ralph. Qantas Ralph. look reliable, announces that its customers will now be charged for checking in at the airport. Passengers have to bring their own food and in-flight entertainment and take turns flying the plane. <laughs> Plus, everyone has to chuck in 20 bucks for petrol. <laughs> uh, the second story, at an auction, uh, on the first anniversary of his death, bidders from around the world spent over one million dollars on Michael Jackson memorabilia. A million bucks to remember Michael Jackson. I remember when youngsters were paid that much to forget him. <laughs> Only... <laughs> ah. Yeah, saved by the glove. Look at that. Pretty young thing. Only three items were left unsold. Tito, Jermaine and LaToya. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Now, this is the one everyone couldn't get. Israel's investigation into the botched raid on a Gaza-bound aid flotilla begins. Unfortunately, 15 minutes in, Israeli commandos boarded the investigation and opened fire. The Sorry. panel includes three... Oh. Was that the one that we all thought was old people going to a sports club? Old people going to... <laughs> you can see, the, con you can the, see the confusion there. Uh, the panel includes three international observers. Nobel Peace Prize laureate David Trimble, oh. former Judge Advocate General Ken Watkin and celebrity guest judge Donna Hay. <laughs> <laughs> Newspapers claim Tiger Woods' wife, Elon, will get the largest ever celebrity divorce payout, around $800 million. It's the biggest amount any man has ever paid for sex. <laughs> In return, Elon can't do interviews, books or TV appearances, even if Tiger dies, or she'll lose the lot. But if someone asks, she is allowed to say hot or cold. <laughs> <laughs> a flying car goes into production in the US at a cost of just $228,000. And it has all the safety features you'd expect in a flying car, none. <laughs> On the plus side, it doubles as a very unusual coffin. Has uh, Tiger Airlines bought one yet? <laughs> it has a top speed of 180 kilometres an hour in the air, folds up easily into a roadworthy car and was developed by a man known only as Q. <laughs> <laughs> the FBI claims to have cracked a Russian spy ring arresting 10 deep cover suspects after watching them for more than a decade. They were such good sleepers, they slept through the entire Bush administration. <laughs> yeah. You were the only one here alive for that. Moscow is outraged. They claim by arresting the spies, the FBI has ruined everything. <laughs> <laughs> and with the paint still drying on his office door, new Deputy Prime Minister Wayne Swan makes use of Kevin Rudd's ticket to the G20 summit in Toronto. Swan was a stand-in for Gillard, who was a stand-in for Rudd, whom they can't stand. 
Take it away. Gone. So after one global round of Good News Week, the Robins team are on. 15 points. The Hooper team, 15 points. <laughs> Coming up, more. Uh, during the break, as we weren't asked to sell out to Channel 7, <laughs> both teams were given three clues to a recent strange but true story. <laughs> Robbins, Flanagan and Ferguson got a writing surface. Hurry up. <laughs> there you go, Mikey. Yeah. So we got like, you know, oh, look at that. Oh, I can see it too. <laughs> oh, look at that. And this is my head. Is he drawing dick and balls? <laughs> and that's my nose. And uh, this is my lips. <laughs> I've swallowed Mikey Robbins. <laughs> oh. But wait, it's upside down. Oh, no. <laughs> this is the kind of thing that will happen if you eat Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also have a pest. Uh, some very handy rabbit. <laughs> I go, what the hell's going oh, on? God. <laughs> well, it, it is, tell you what, this is one of the worst trained rabbits we've ever had on the show. <laughs> oh, you got, you got nice, very massagey hands. Thank you, rabbit. Yeah, oh, good. Hey, okay, don't leave your fur on me. Thank you, rabbit. Oh, Thank you. That's a pest, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pest. It's a <laughs> rabbity pest. <laughs> <laughs> You know where the dressing room is. I'll see you there in a second. <laughs> and for my clue, oh, I Mr. had Ferguson no clue see. at all. So I thought we'd get a specialist to come in and do the clue. Um, so here is a Dan Sultan I prepared earlier. Hey, Dan. How are you? Good. There you go. Been in the news? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Love you. Hey. That's one person. <laughs> <laughs> but tomorrow on Army, uh, the, the record again, how's it going? It's going well, yeah. yeah. You're going to London short, is that right? Or we're England? about to be going, yeah. We're going to go in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. We've only got a few shows over there, but just a few um, showcases and we'll give it, give it a nudge. Well, there's a lot of go. people over in Britain. Oh, yeah. well done, Captain Obvious. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you do a couple of shows over here and you've got, to, you've got to travel for miles over hill and, you know, over there, they're all in one sort of spot, millions of them. <laughs> I've noticed. <laughs> uh, and Dan, you've just been to China, I believe. You did the World Expo there. What was yeah, that? Yeah, went to Shanghai. I was, it was wild over there. I love, I love it. You know, I didn't. I only saw Shanghai. I didn't see anywhere. It's a big, big country. You know, but um, not as big as uh, Australia, though, is it? No. Um, or is it bigger? Well, Shanghai's got the population of Australia. How's it compared yeah. to Britain? <laughs> <laughs> so, what is your special subject? Geography. <laughs> Well, there's better Chinese food in Shanghai oh, okay. than in England. Hey, what, uh, what clue do you have for us? I have a song that I'm going to sing. That's and lucky, isn't Cam it? would be so fun. Uh, India. Big population. Big population. Hooper, Green and Barker have a writing machine. It's been a long time since I used anything but an iPhone, so... <laughs> no, 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 Claire. No. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, yeah. Shouldn't have looked straight into that. that was... I'm not getting very good reception. <laughs> <laughs> For the young people, this is the internet 1.0. <laughs> yeah, this means you got an email. <laughs> Did you know if you put an infinite number of typewriters with an infinite number of monkeys, 
they will eventually create Twitter. <laughs> uh, we have a fragrance delivery system. Uh, this is a uh, rather large... Uh, it's not what you think. <laughs> There's no batteries in this. Um, it is a chilli, and just after you touch this, just remember not to uh, take your contact lenses out or scratch your balls. Um, <laughs> but it's no ordinary chilli. Wait. There you go, there you go, there you go. Oh, oh, well oh, well done, wow. Jeff. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> What's the chain of events that you're worried about, Jeff? Touching chilies, then, oh, quick, I've got to take my contact lenses out and scratch me balls as quickly as possible. <laughs> what goes on in your house? Were, were, you having a, <laughs> were you having a quick look at your balls with your contact lenses? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure so. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Well, you know, when you do a lot of swimming in England, your balls are very, very small. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely are. When I went swimming in England, my scrotum went into my body so fast, <laughs> two lumps appeared behind my ears. <laughs> <laughs> and finally this, we have this uh, fromage. Yeah, well, I thought it'd be nice for my clue if I introduced a sensational singer. Please welcome Sally Seltman. Right. <laughs> Hello, Sally. Can we talk about your new, uh, before you start? Or do you want to talk about it afterwards? Um, we can talk about it before. There it is. <laughs> You're proud? Yeah, I'm proud. And funnily enough, the title is Heart That's Pounding, and that's what, that's what my heart's doing now. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Sally. We love you, Sally. It's gorgeous. Oh, thanks. Do you know, do everyone, does everyone know Sally? Yes. New Buffalo? Yeah. Oh. Hey, hey, Paul, Paul. Ask her the population of France. What's the, have you ever toured France? Have they got no, a big population there? I've been to Paris, but I, I haven't played there. Uh, you have a national tour as well? Yep. When I do you begin your tour? This Friday the 9th in Brisbane. Are you travelling a lot? Doing um, a lot of yeah, we gigs? just got back from America. America? Mm. Ah, big uh, population. That's a big population. <laughs> You've been there, haven't you, Ash? Yeah, about 240 mil. 240 mil? <laughs> oh, that shit's on us, eh? <laughs> Actually, in many ways, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you uh, ready now for your moment of wonder and yeah. glory? Okay. Ready. Take it away. Stop your messing around. Ah, better think of your future. Ah, time to straighten right out. Uh, the Brilliant Minds and our teams will do something with all that at the end of the show. Now to the game called Survey Says, Mrs Flanagan. <coughs> in a poll by a Danish headphone and headset manufacturer, 28% of people admitted texting while driving. What did 30% admit doing behind the wheel? <laughs> Eating breakfast, then brushing their teeth. <laughs> Sudoku, crosswords and iPhone games. <laughs> Kissing and engaging in other sexual acts. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's th only 30% because 70% of people in Denmark can do all three of those things at once. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually thinking just rape and pillage like the Vikings did. <laughs> I, I think it might be the Sudoku's. That's, the, that's <laughs> or kissing or... Oh, I hope it's not the last one. I'm going to give grubby. you five seconds to come up with an answer, then oh, we're moving on. it's probably the last one. It's very grubby. Is it? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Driving blowjobs. <laughs> Oh, is that what we're talking about? Did you say drive through blow jobs? <laughs> <laughs> now, that, there'd be a cue at McDonald's. <laughs> Not if Ronald's doing it. <laughs> He's quicker. Yes. <laughs> Are we saying the, the third up there? Yes? Yes. Because a, drive, a driving blow job is a quandary for every man. Because <laughs> you want one, but you don't really want to die with your knob out, do you? <laughs> Surely what you don't want to do is break suddenly. No. <laughs> Sharp corners? Oh. Yeah. Or blow into the bag. <laughs> oh, let's... I'm sorry, people of Australia. 
Let's see the last if one. Kitty was right mm. with the last one. Yeah. Oh. And finally, the hair removal company NADS surveyed a thousand people <laughs> in New South Wales. What did they find? 3% of women wear a merkin in winter. 20% of men are opting for a Brazilian wax. 8% of people trim with scissors so they can keep the hair for other use. <laughs> this was Australian, wasn't it? Not the Danish. Because in, in Denmark, they have um, that kids show Gherkins in Merkins. It's a bit like bananas in pajamas. Um, <laughs> Just a ter- if I was a teddy bear, I'd run. <laughs> I think it's probably 20% of men are opting for a Brazilian because they don't actually know what it is. They're going in thinking some hot woman's going to come out. And really what happens is they wax your ball bag. <laughs> actually, if they are a little overindulgent, a hot woman will walk out. <laughs> we'll keep that. <laughs> He lost a nut doing a, a Brazilian, yeah, the other day, doing a charity Brazilian, and his mate was doing it, you know, because it's hilarious, and took off five of the six layers of skin of his testicles. Oh! And the doctor said he would have actually lost, you know, would have come out the side if they'd been. Anyway, just interesting news fact. I think um, 20% of men are opting for a Brazilian. Let's see if Kitty's right. Yeah. Perfect score. So one of you guys on the panel has one. <laughs> Is that right, Maths? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Jeez, I'm thinking hard. Oh, just probably the only bloke in the right area. <laughs> I actually cut myself shaving. Now it really hurts when I pee. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Green, are you ready to tackle some survey My scrotum went into my body so fast. <laughs> Uh, a cough medicine company asked almost 800 Australians how they felt about people who cough without covering their mouth. What did 54% compare it to? Oh, okay. People who leave their chewing gum behind, people who break wind in lifts, yeah. <laughs> people who blow their nose and then look in their handkerchief. Uh, oh. ah. Breaking wind in a lift is actually not a bad thing. It's actually very funny. And uh, <laughs> that should be supported and congratulated. Um, I once coughed and sneezed at the same time. My scrotum went into my head. <laughs> so fast. <laughs> do, do, do you not spend any time out of your body? Coughing without covering your mouth, it's an issue of contagion, and none yeah. of the other ones are contagious. But it just made me think, imagine if smelling other people's farts meant you caught their gas. Can you imagine? Because that's when it would really be offensive. Otherwise, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just funny. But if yeah. you caught it, you'd be like, oh, no, I breathed it in and I've got a date tonight. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I do guess. You know what bothers you... me? Sorry, it's just, you know, if you cough and then, like, you sneeze, people always claim it's allergies. It's like a cover-all excuse. And clearly they're not well. You know, it's always the same excuse. Nah, it's just allergies. But someone will... Someone will come to your barbecue with the Ebola virus. <laughs> oh my God, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, it's just it's the pollen. <laughs> yeah. It always makes me vomit out of my back this time of year. You know? <laughs> and then that, and that gag is actually based on actual uh, symptoms of the Ebola and Marburg virus. <laughs> Lapping and learning. <laughs> oh, I appreciate yeah, it. <laughs> Do we have a, an can answer? I just, uh, can I just say, the only opportunity, to uh, a chance to get germs, I reckon, is the chewing gum. I actually do think that's disgusting. Um, but I think, in reality, it's going to be the handkerchief. Let's see if Jeff is right. Oh! oh! oh you were so close! Bam, bam. <laughs> and finally, a poll by the Pew Research Centre found almost 50% of Americans believe by 2050, Jesus Christ will return. What do 31% believe? <laughs> that humans will be wiped out by an asteroid? That Satan will rise in the Middle East? <laughs> that Jesus will turn out to be a space alien? <laughs> um, Satan, are you sure that's Satan and not Santa? <laughs> Santa will rise in the Middle East. In fact, Santa would be spelt differently, that's one giveaway. <laughs> Could have been a typo. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go for the asteroid. You're going to oh, go for the really? asteroid? Oh, Okay. Oh, see, I, no, I thought team, you were onto t- it with the Middle East one. What do you think, Arj? I'm happy to well, be out I'm, I'm not quite 31% of Americans. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> I think, out of all those, I think it's most likely that the asteroids are coming. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think, you know, lap it up. 
Fucking laugh it up. <laughs> I do believe in God, because I look at my life and think, it can't all be my fault. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm going to go with the asteroid. I think we... Yeah, yeah sure. Asteroid, asteroid please. Boys. Asteroid, 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 asteroid. Let's see if Jeff is right. Hey. Bang! <laughs> oh, yes. Almost 50% of Americans expect Jesus to return by 2050, yet 31% believe humans will be wiped out by an asteroid. So there's no point in vacuuming. <laughs> Uh, of course, they could both be true. Jesus might return riding an asteroid <laughs> to wipe out the humans. I'm sure Christ will appear by 2050. After all, the Bible said he'd be back after a millennium. And it's ridiculous to think he'd be any more than 1,050 years late. <laughs> uh, of course, it's likely Christ has returned several times already. What if he's here right now, walking amongst us? Oh, no! What if he was Kevin Rudd? <laughs> The Robins is now on 30 points, five points in front. The Hoop is now 25 points. It's a competition. After the break, we bring in the couch. It's good news, this is Couch Potato, Australian TV's cheapest therapy. And first up on the black leather and gaffer tape tonight, Mr. Tim Ferguson. Oh. Sit right down. How are you, Timmy? I'm going very well, Polly. Good evening. Good evening. Is that the first question? No, no, we haven't started yet. That's okay. Good. You know, do a bit of banter before we get are stuck they, in. Are they difficult questions? They're really hard, these ones. Okay. Yeah. And how are you? I mean, how are you? I'm really good. <laughs> it's a nice well. suit. Do you like it? Yep. You're going overseas tomorrow? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Are you just going to go over the ocean and then come back, or are you going to you're going to go and land somewhere? <laughs> We're off to Montreal, do the comedy festival, have a look at uh, some people over there. You just walk up, look at them. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I oh. could never go on holiday with you. Oh. I think he thinks he's supposed to ask the questions. Yeah, you're not, you're not meant to ask the questions, fella. It's banter. It's not banter. You're just asking me questions that I don't feel inclined to answer. Well, it's banter. It's just like the old days. <laughs> you made it like the old days. <laughs> Might as well be going to Kalgoorlie in a bloody van. <laughs> to look at people. To look at people. Well, <laughs> licking the windows of your Tarago. <laughs> Please. OK, we're going to start with some word association. OK. Are you ready for that? Yes, I'm ready. Can you stop coughing that fella? It's really, it's really upsetting me. <clears throat> Get uh, over your goddamn cold. <laughs> well, don't bother coming along here with your germs, all right? Control freak. <laughs> so we're going to start now with some word association. Canberra. Cold, 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 cold. people. Oh, people are cold in Canberra. Mm -hmm. You look at them. Oh. I love Canberra though. Oh, lovely you know, place. That's where we met, of course. Yes. It's beautiful. Oh. Yeah, you ladies know? love that. Ladies love that. Want to see us kiss? There's a little. <laughs> There's a little plaque in Karima Place in the centre of town which says Tim and Paul and Richard kissed Richard, here. <laughs> yeah, Richard was Richard, the girl yeah. on the... Yeah. <laughs> Feminism? It's dead. We have to save it, sisters. We have to save it. Men will take charge of feminism now because you're doing a hopeless job. <laughs> Toothbrush. Oh, shit, I've... Oh, I forgot to bring it. <laughs> you know, the funny thing about doing a show called, you know, Don't Forget a Toothbrush, is you go to nightclubs and beautiful people look at you from across the crowded bar and go... <laughs> Paul. Jam Beauty is a beautiful man. <laughs> Gorgeous human. He wrote man. some great songs, beautiful man. music. Without him, the Beatles would have been nothing. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, is it time to go a bit deeper? Yes. Okay. Is that the question? Mm. <laughs> Where do you think you went wrong? Well, I'm going to answer this seriously, this question, because a lot of people are always saying to me, what went wrong with you? Why do you walk like that? Like these days, I walk with this really cool stick, which a mate of mine, Al, gave to me, because she, frankly, rocks. And I walk with this walking stick, because it's MS, which stands for Ms, which is why it causes so much trouble. <laughs> It's nothing to worry about. Millions of people have this. Most of them don't even know they've got it. Paul, are you OK? I'm all right. So, so uh, if you do see me, that's what the stick's about. But don't worry, I'm all fine and I'm still capable of firing a sniper shot at any time. I think one of the great things about having a stick is you could hit children that are being pesky that are just out of arm's reach. Like normally, oh, I've missed him, but with a stick you go, bang! I blame the parents. They never see it coming. You ever got into a fight with a geriatric with another stick? Yes, I like have. Like a lightsaber moment. Well, I did. I do also have a walking lightsaber. Uh, <laughs> which is, you'll be able to see where I've been because there are holes in the... <laughs> in the ground. It cost a fortune. Uh, what did you want to be before you got into comedy? The Pope. <laughs> The current Pope or the last Pope? Or? <laughs> Actually, I wanted to be uh, uh, John Paul. I thought he did a bloody great job being Polish. And I always thought, I could do that. The man doesn't make any sense. And after a while, his material got worse and worse because he was just... <laughs> I could do that. I can do that. Look, I can walk around the world just going... <laughs> You're often referred to as the pretty one in a moderately successful comedy trio. <laughs> Did you like that title? Yes, of course I liked that title, although, let's be frank, it wasn't exactly, you know, much competition. No. <laughs> Are you jealous of Richard's success too? <laughs> Is that like uh, Richard Pryor movie? Richard, Richard uh, Feidler. I've talked oh. about it before. Are you jealous yeah. of his success in the conversation? Jealous. He's on ABC Radio Is he? in Brisbane and also he does <laughs> Sydney's Lunchtimes, the conversation hour, you can imagine. Yeah, it goes for about uh, an hour and a half, doesn't it? Well, it feels we, like it does. We went through a, a conversation <laughs> decade with Richard. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy listening. <laughs> <laughs> We're both actually very proud very of him, proud. but, very you know, frightfully, frightfully uh, scared of him now because he runs Brisbane. <laughs> What's your favourite thing about the internet? <laughs> I'm not saying that. <laughs> Who would play you in the Tim Ferguson story? Me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you please thank Tim Ferguson? Another patient on the couch right after this. The couch is calling you, Ash Barker. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Great. You're very sartorial tonight. Yeah, it's my new uh, sailor style jacket. No light? Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you get a lot of stuff falling out of the pockets up here? Uh, no, I don't think it's, it's just like a little sort of cloth vagina right there on the... Uh, <laughs> I don't think you can put anything in there. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so, should we begin with a bit of word association? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Where can you go after cloth vagina? <laughs> it certainly disappointed me that nothing could go in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to begin with a bit of word association. Australia. Women in power. <laughs> Come on, sisters. Yeah, right? Very exciting. You like Julia? You know, we got the first black president, you got the first woman. Ooh. So, you know, we're splitting up the uh, excitement. <laughs> and she's, she's uh, unmarried. Do you think anything could happen? Any magic could happen between our redhead and Barack? Well, she's got a partner. Oh, which yeah. is, uh, that's what they call your person, you know, your boyfriend or your girlfriend here. Which is weird because everyone else is your mate, except the person that you actually mate with. <laughs> and, that, and, that, and that's the person you're supposedly in love with. And like they're your better half, but you call them your partner. 
It sounds so, it, it really does sound barren. Mm. It sounds, uh, it sounds sterile. Yeah. You know, I can hardly think of anything less personal like, fellas, well, honey, these are my mates. And fellas, this is my intercourse associate. <laughs> She's the, she's the one, she's the one. Uh, cats? I like cats, but I like dogs too. And, and, and people always say like, oh, people feel like you have to be, be one or the other. I'm a cat person, I'm a dog person. I don't know why you have to, to choose between one or the other. Am I, am I the only one? I enjoy making love to both cats and dogs. <laughs> and it's like, why do you have to pick one? <laughs> I'm sorry, that made my eyes water slightly. <laughs> this may not be important to you then. Groupies. <laughs> I mean, why bother with groupies when you go down to the pet shore and just... Uh, <laughs> no, I want to sit it, but I don't want like the SPCA coming after me or whatever. It's like, not, it's not cool. Uh, pet, petting, fine. But, uh, you know, cut it off, cut it off at petting. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hollywood? Hope, fear, big old fake titties. Amsterdam? Anne Frank. <laughs> Van Gogh. Yeah. Whores! Sleep. Sleep's definitely uh, one of my favorite things. And do you get, the, do you get enough sleep each night? I well, guess? it varies, you know, it really varies. You know, I have to get up pretty early sometimes. I don't know, I mean, I've always wondered that about the snooze bar. It defeats the purpose of the alarm clock. You know, it's just a built-in cheating option. <laughs> and I finally just taped it down. Endlessness? Forever. <laughs> Available in stores near you in August. I've got this, I've got this whole thing yeah. as well. Hey, yeah, yeah. two for one. Look at that, not a lot of applause going around the room for that. That's a good so we'll try that, a, 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 that again. Just, just with, uh, you I know, saw just that in the, uh, I saw that in the bargain bin at JB. <laughs> <laughs> I've got this one. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Ferguson's on that. Yeah. Uh, what did you really want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be a video game tester. <laughs> and I am, sort of, but I just don't get paid for it. Do you ever see yourself eventually settling down with a wife and kids? Yes. Yeah? But not mine. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh... uh... How do you know what's worth tweeting? You don't. Really. <laughs> you can tell by how many responses you get. And then, sometimes, someone will retweet something I said two years ago, I forgot I said it. Like, just, you don't think it's that funny, like in Amsterdam. I said, you know, I can't sleep. These fucking Dutch joggers outside my window. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a wooden shoe joke. <laughs> and, and, and somebody, somebody enjoyed that one like two years later. <laughs> or maybe it took them that long to get it. <laughs> a TV network gives you $2 million to make a show. What do you do? I take 100000 to produce a show called Watch Me Spend $1.9 Million. <laughs> it's a reality show. Uh, if you could get away with it, what crime would you commit? Uh, jaywalking. <laughs> I just, I did it in Bendigo, I got tasered. <laughs> they're quite strict in Bendigo, by the sound of it. Yeah, yeah, they don't like it. You well, wouldn't they, think there'd well, be that many cars around in Bendigo, do well, they? There aren't, and they don't care, but they just allowed uh, tasering, it's like one of the first cities in Australia to allow tasering, and since there's no crime, the cops are just like sitting on the roofs just waiting to like, <laughs> they gotta do something, so they're just tasering people for anything. <laughs> oh, taking the tags off the mattress, huh? <laughs> uh, and finally, when you die, what would you like done with your body? I'd like to be frozen in that shit like Han Solo got in, no. uh, <laughs> In, uh, in Empire Strikes Empire, Back. We've uh, we got a Ferg on this one. Empire Strikes Back, Ferg. Carbonite, that's the one I got some. Carbonite? <laughs> yeah, he'll freeze me. And then I just want to be, I just want to be dumped in the ocean. Uh, and so every once in a while, people will be at the beach and I'll just float up. <laughs> and I'll just be like, my thighs, my thighs. Nice, Barker, keeping it real.
Ladies and gentlemen, Ash Barker. Coming up, seven things for the beat. This is seven things for the bin, the game of pent-up rage that's fun for the whole family. Mikey, what's twisting your frilly knickers this week? Well, actually, in... Uh, oh, thank you. God bless. <laughs> I thought you'd never notice. <laughs> um, in Saturday's paper, there was a piece about uh, the, the late Prime Minister. I think I'm no longer Prime Minister. Kevin Rudd, OK? I think it's wrong to call him the late Prime Minister. <laughs> that, that sounds... That's, that's gone very Harold Holt on the poor bugger. Yeah, still, <laughs> clearly he's not the late Prime Minister. Clearly he's still got a little ticker oh. going out there. It's probably broken. Yeah. Two pieces, but, you know... <laughs> I um, love him. Well, the thing is, you know, look, maybe the guy had a few personality problems. He was described in this very paper as a sociopath. <laughs> I mean, come on, what, did Tintin and Dexter have a baby? <laughs> Let him retire in peace. Has he retired? He's not retired okay, yet. OK, he's he? not dead and he's not retired. <laughs> <laughs> but I read the articles, I get stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to weigh in on that and just say the Labor Party in the goddamn bin, because let's be honest, all the T-shirts and all the all the promotion back in the day was Kevin 07. It wasn't Labor Party 07, was it? We didn't vote for Labor Party 07. We we we, yep. we voted for the little fellow with the glasses and the nerdy blonde, no, 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 great silver hair. Everyone's blaming the Labor Party. Everyone's blaming the miners. Everyone's bl blaming this and that. I know who to blame. Natasha Stott the Spoiler was <laughs> no was head of the Democrats. Came on this show. <laughs> Julie Bishop was high, you know, you remember she lost her gig in the Liberal Party yeah. after she came on this show. <laughs> Who was the last politician to come on this show? Ke Kevin, Kevin Wright. <laughs> Tony, give us a call. Hi. <laughs> well, I'm so mad right now. <laughs> uh, it's in my son, this magazine. But, it's, you know, it's all the cleaning products they sell, it's like, everyone says the same thing, it kills 99.9% .9 of the germs, right? I'm thinking, great. But it's that bloody 0.1% germ that su survived that I'm worried about. It's like, you just killed all his friends and family. <laughs> and now I got an indestructible germ with nothing left to lose. <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. Am I right, people? Am I right? Unbelievable. Can I put um, an action in the bin? Because I would like to point out that this does not stop you crying. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, told, who told you that worked? Everybody does it. All the, all the young yeah. girls on the children go, on MasterChef, they're all going, I just really mucked up. <laughs> I've mucked up my dish. Uh, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> This, this does not wave the tears back in. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Uh, Chappelle. <laughs> Kitty, uh, Kitty, uh, Kitty mentioned MasterChef. I'm, I'm not Gary and George. I'm, they're, they're lovely boys. But there was a recipe recently. No, they are. They're very sweet and they, and they, they dance beautifully. Um, there was the... You have got five minutes. Oh, no. Hurry I'm, up. I came like... Uh, but basically, there's a recipe I'm reading. There's a recipe I'm reading for sorbet. Sorbet sucks. Sorbet is not ice cream. It will never be ice cream. Sorbet is a slurpee that's up itself. <laughs> sorbet in the bin. Oh. <laughs> Women. Actually, women's magazines, women's magazines, and they, with all these mad claims on the front to get you to buy it, change your curtains and lose weight. <laughs> I was married to a suicide bomber, but he went off with someone else. <laughs> Drive your man wild in the bedroom, hide his slippers. <laughs> Look, 20 years younger, stand further away. <laughs> in the bloody bed. I don't ever want to hear about Justin Bieber again. <laughs> I want my look back, Justin. <laughs> now, I just have a bit of an issue with all the young girls and the way they're dressing sort of in a slutty way. Um, <laughs> No, I just want to point out. No, I just, I just want to point out that when you are 16, 
you could wear a skivvy and some pull-up tracksuit pants and some Ugg boots because really your counterpart is a 16-year-old boy. So your competition is a sock, girls. <laughs> Pretty much wear whatever you want and you're still going to get some. No need to walk around looking slatty. I'll tell you what else I'm mad about is shit bins. Like, people, you need to spend a little more money on your bathroom bin and don't try to think you're all futuristic just because you don't have a pedal on it. All right, what am I, a drummer? All right, I just want to put, some, to put a tissue in there. That's all I want. And in, unless there's already, like, a few, a few kilos of stuff, I, I step on it and, the, and the, the whole bin flies into my shit. <laughs> Okay, now I got shin bin, all right? I don't need that. So I'm, I'm, putting, the bin, I'm putting the bins in the bin. Yeah. yeah. What about recycling? Yeah. yeah. What about the recycling bin? Because that's the problem with drinking heavily in Australia. Because I like to drink. When my kids go to bed, I can't get the drinking fast enough. <laughs> I'm usually on two vodka drips going, take away the pain. <laughs> But you got your, your, you know, with, with you got your recycling, you have to bring out your yellow lidded wheelie bin of shame. <laughs> <laughs> Every week. <laughs> you know, going, yes, there does seem to be a lot of bottles, doesn't there? Yes. <laughs> yes, when you put them all in one place, they go, oh, that's not just Monday's bottles. You have to go and get Tuesday's bottles now. Uh, Jeff, do you, do you do this one? We put the mineral water bottles on top. <laughs> Got. I'll tell you what I'm most annoyed about, and it's the uh, it's the favourite new advertising catchphrase. It's just one word, and it makes me sick, and I'm over it. Don't fall for it. Real, real bacon strips, real chicken breast, we real wheat flakes, trying to give the impression that it might be fresh or chemical free, or even it's not even natural. It just it's just a legal term for not imaginary. We're not <laughs> falling for it. <laughs> John Howard, you want to be the president of the ICC? Are there no depths to which you won't sing? That's it. We're out. Thanks for coming next. Time to unlock those strange but true doors. Mikey Kitty Tim, you had the blackboard. Blackboard face, huh? Let's see what Harry Connick Jr. has to say about that, huh? <laughs> so we have the blackboard, we also have the bunnies. It's a handy the sponge. <laughs> I want to shoot him with this thing. Stay still, bunny. <laughs> They're a pest. They're a goddamn pest. Someone drag that rabbit away, please. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. You might need someone else to help you. Did you say breathing? <laughs> that rabbit's wearing shoes! <laughs> and finally, we have this. If you want the truth, you can't handle the truth. I am going to bring out Dan, the man, Sultan, to give you the truth. Hey, Dan. Well, I got legs, I can walk, all the way to the third track. I fell down, I got up, turned around and I walked back. Walked to the sea, I stood there.
Dan Sultan. Uh, do we do we have an answer? How oh, do these, look uh... at you all rushy, rush, rush now. Um, I think we do actually. You were saying you think this is a German story. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and... uh, this is a story about um... a girl named Brady. <laughs> It's a, it's a teacher in Germany um, walked into a classroom and said, now, kids, don't you... Except she had a German accent. Um, Do with a German accent. Sure. Um, now, kinder... <laughs> don't you go drawing any rabbits on the blackboard because I'll really flip out. And that's what she said. She said, I'll flip out. So, surprisingly, <laughs> a child got up and drew a rabbit on the blackboard and she flipped out and went and got a lawyer and she's now suing the kid. Well, I think she, she's, actually, she's actually got a weird phobia. Now, I used to uh, go to school with someone who was terrified of chickens. Could not, not, not even not just be with chickens. That's, that's probably just good, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but even a picture of a chicken or a representation of a chicken would drive this person berserk. We'll I just... think the big so mistake this... was walking into a classroom and saying to kids, now listen, I'm really scared of rabbits. If you draw one on the board, I'm going to flip out. What do you think's going to happen, you stupid woman? You're a teacher. Do you not work with children? Uh, this Especially person... when she says it in German. Yeah. Das ist ein kleiner Gemeinschaft, das ist ein Uh, they do have it, ladies and gentlemen. In Germany, a teacher with a pathological fear of rabbits is suing a student for drawing a picture of a bunny on the blackboard. Uh, the teacher, identified only as Marion, is terrified of rabbits, and therefore frogs, because they say, rabbit, rabbit. <laughs> uh, and therefore frogs' legs, French, French kissing, lips, lip sinking, sinking things, the Titanic icebergs and lettuce. And what eats lettuce? <laughs> rabbits! <laughs> Poor Marion, no one's had an Easter that rough since Jesus. <laughs> a psychologist thinks the cause of the problem is Marion's belief that in a past life she was a carrot. <laughs> Can't wait till she finds out that the school musical this year is Donnie Darko. <laughs> They're breeding out there. <laughs> Hang on. Here we go. Oh, rabbit. Really the cute rabbit. Okay, good. Sorry about this, everyone. The only, the only way to make sure a rabbit is dead is to cut off its head. Paul, do you want to uh, skin the bunny, mate, with this knife? That's not a knife. This is a knife. <laughs> oh, wait a second. I don't know how to do this. Kevin Rudd is dead. <laughs> Claire, Jeff, uh, is your clues were the typewriter? Typewriter lady. I feel so mad. Wow, it's like Mad Men. I know. Ooh. I feel really oppressed. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, we also have the spray. Oh. Mm. Ah! <laughs> and finally this. Well, I, it was so good before, and it was too short, though, so I thought we'd bring her back. So let's give a warm round of applause for Sally Seltman, everybody.
Do we have an answer? Well, I, I think I know. Oh. Um, I think what happened was there, there was a guy called Rudy. And uh, <laughs> he walked into his kitchen and, and uh, this pepper was like really hot. Like seriously hot. And like it was so hot, it started, smoke started coming out of it. So he's freaking out. He's like, my pepper's on fire. <laughs> and so we called up, he called 911 or whatever you call in this country to uh, get the, yeah, he, he, said, I, he said, I need a firefighter. I need a firefighter, but the, the music was, the reggae was turned up so high in his house that the, on the other end, they thought he said, I need a fire rider. And so this is what showed up in his house. And he said, I don't know what's going on. Um, yeah. Oh, well, I think it's that, or... Um, uh, Claire. It's, it's an anti-swearing device. Do I sound like I'm on the right track? You are totally on like... the right track. Okay, so it's this little device. You attach it USB-style into the side of it, and if you, um, if you write something, it gives you a little warning light, and, um, and if you don't, go back and erase the little... or the little... Um, then, <laughs> then it goes... Then it gives you a little bit of a... naughty, and, um, and it's meant to teach you not to swear in your emails and stuff. I would like the reverse. Yeah. Obviously, I'd like one that sits there and just basically, if you if you write swear words, it notices and it just yells them to the rest of the office. Fuck! <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be absolute hell for people with Tourette's, isn't it? <laughs> yes, Arj, you seem to be um, grabbing was, something. Was mine wrong? <laughs> <laughs> it also comes with a little um, warning as well that if the spray does get in your eyes, just do this. <laughs> <laughs> So if Lanny can bring you all home, Claire does have it for that team's 10 points. That's it. <laughs> An inventor from Eastern Europe has come up with a device that combats uh, bad language online by spraying an unpleasant smell when you type offensive words. <laughs> He's put the pew into computer. I tell you, between this and those new laws in Queensland, this anti-swearing thing is really starting to shit me. Uh, when you first type something offensive, the pepper mouth flashes a red light as a warning. If you persist, it releases a terrible pong that doesn't easily dissipate. And if you still persist, it takes a dump on your desk, unplugs its head, <laughs> and leaves with your wife. <laughs> it has all the swear words, including thousands you've never heard of, from tackle trumpet and crump monkey to flaps hacking mucus pickle. <laughs> Here it is, the game that really is bigger than his sperm count, Tiger Woods' fast money. In Switzerland, yes. an exhibit at a toy fair has been branded sick and offensive. What is this exhibit? Barbie's first bulimia? No, that would be offensive. <laughs> Plastic vomit? No. Oh. Is this cigarettes? I have read it and I can't bouncy, remember. Bouncy, it's bouncy, bouncy castle. Is it just a fat guy saying he's a bouncy castle? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. What is the bouncy castle? A bouncy castle in the shape of the Titanic and it sinks. Complete, oh. complete with inflatable icebergs. It's nice. oh. <laughs> that uh, not offensive if Celine Dion's on it. <laughs> in Holland, the body of a man with a notoriously bad temper was found in his bed four years after he last was seen. What happened? If his temper was that bad. They were afraid to wake him up. They thought he was sleeping. They thought he would like he was such a dick that like they were like I'm not gonna wake him up. Gonna, I'm not gonna wake him up. And they just said fuck it and they went out a party. <laughs> I was just sort of half right. He, he had a, a fight with his family. And as he was walking out the door, he said, I'm going to bed, don't disturb me. And they didn't for four years. <laughs> well, what Which is sort of what you said. Sort of what so I'm, I'm going with what I said. He, he's dead, dead as a dog. Okay, the last one's open to everyone. In New Zealand, after a four day drinking binge, Paul Sneddon rolled his car yes, and was yes, trapped he, upside he down. He kept drinking. He, 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 he kept drinking. Beer. You what was he drinking, beer. though? Beer, beer, beer. beer. Oh, okay. beer. I'm going to give you five points each for that. <laughs> That's it. So in the river tonight, Mikey Robbins, Kenny Flanagan and Tim Ferguson scored a momentous 180 points. <laughs> Strangely, in the closing quarter, neck and neck with Claire Hooper, Jeff Green and Arsh Barker on 180 points. <laughs> It's more thrilling than World Cup soccer. <laughs> 10.com.au slash GNW is the place to get the podcast, see the director's cut, or apply for one of the many new jobs now available in the Russian Secret Service. Uh, <laughs> we're off for a couple of weeks, but next Monday is our special from the Montreal Comedy Festival. And the Monday after, this year's great debate from Melbourne with Arj Barker. Uh, <laughs>
Uh, Fiona O'Loughlin and an uppity young lady named Cal Wilson, just to name a few. So we say, run, Dimitri, run! Your cover is blown. <laughs> and leave you with the good news for the week ahead. On Wednesday, Sunday, Rose Kidman will turn two. On Sunday, Wednesday, Kid Roseman <laughs> will turn 92. <laughs> Coincidence? <laughs> Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, will turn 63. And Charles will give her the most beautiful and wonderful gift of all, the head of his mother on a platter. <laughs> Sunday is the beginning of Diabetes Awareness Week. If someone you know is at risk, don't sugarcoat it. It could put... <laughs> it could put them in a coma. And Malcolm Turnbull will be in discussion with the authors of the new book about the Rudd government and the GFC. Shitstorm. <laughs> Remember the Rudd government, eh? Good times, people. Good times. <laughs> Good night. Yeah.